Hello, everyone. This is Betsy Wurzel, your host of Chatting with Betsy on Passionate World Talk Radio Network, a subsidiary of Global Media Network, LLC. Our mantra is to educate, enlighten, and entertain. The views of the guests may not represent those of the host of the station. Folks, I have phenomenal guests on my show, and today I have an extra phenomenal guest. And I'm very grateful and excited to have my guests on and to do what I do, and that's to provide the audience with resources that you may not know about to help you and help your loved ones to have a better quality of of life and for information to, to help you. And that's what I'm here for. That's what Chatting with Betsy is about. And I want to give you some background uh, about my guests today. I noticed my guest on LinkedIn, and I was very touched by the work that my guest does. It is heart-touching. And if you are a veteran, do you know a veteran or are a veteran or want to help veterans, you're going to want to listen to this show and share it. With me today is Claude Schmidt, retired colonel who served 31 years in the U.S. Army, held seven command positions, completed two tours in Iraq, for which she was awarded two Bronze Stars. Colonel Cloyd Schmid served three years as the chief of the Army's Wounded Warrior Flight Program, believing that no veteran should depart this life without a friend nearby. Colonel Claude volunteers extensively for veterans in hospice. In 2019, Colonel Claude founded www.veteranslastpatrol.org, which is a nonprofit organization dedicated to be friends, honoring and supporting veterans in the end of life care. Last Veterans Last Patrol is Uh, Presently active in 27 states, they are seeking supporters, volunteers around the country. Also, Colonel Schmid is author and writer of a novel, Iraq War novel, Princes of War, which has excellent reviews, which came out in 2016. And uh, the motto of this the wonderful nonprofit is bringing friendship to veterans in hospice care. And I want to welcome retired Colonel Claude Schmid to Chatting with Betsy. Welcome. Thank you so much, Betsy. I appreciate you having me on your program, and I look forward to speaking with you. Oh, I am so honored. It's, it's my pleasure. Um, I'm going to have to call you Colonel. <laughs> Colonel Schmid. Don't worry about that. Don't worry. (laughs) I salute you. Thank you for serving your country 31 years. Thank Thank you for all. uh, You're welcome. Thank you for all that you do. When I saw the work that you do on LinkedIn, the pictures, and by the way, all the information about uh, the guests will be in the blog. Um, I encourage everyone, go on the website and look at the pictures, see what this wonderful nonprofit is about. It will touch your heart. Um, And I I just can't thank you enough. When I look at your pictures, not only is it heart touching for me because my father served in the uh, Navy during World War II, my father-in-law, how I wished that there was something like this for them when they were dying. And uh, so I want to thank you uh, for what, you do and, and your volunteers. How did we you? A privilege. We consider it a privilege, Betsy, and it's you know men and women like your father and his generation that really inspired us, and uh, it's our goal today to just to make sure that veterans that are on their last patrol, which are veterans in hospice care and end of life care, uh, know that Americans care about them, and that's why we're doing what we're doing. Absolutely, and uh, in my opinion veterans should get the best of care, especially on their last patrol. How did you come up with that name, the name of your organization? Well, it's, a, it's an interesting story. Basically, 
all veterans are experienced in a branch of service, so Army, Air Force, Navy, Marines, <coughs> Coast Guard, now the Space Force, and all branches of service have a concept or an understanding of patrolling. It could be sea patrols, it could be land patrols, it could be air patrols, and we know that concept of patrolling. We talk about it as we are serving, but uh, when we go into end-of-life care, you know, that's essentially our last patrol, and like all patrols in the military, uh, they shouldn't be done alone. So no one that's dying or near the end of their life should be trying to do that or living that experience, that tragic but unavoidable experience alone. They should be part of a team. And so last patrol is about bringing teammates to fellow veterans that are on their last patrol, their final chapter of life. That, that is beautiful. It, it really is. And I hope, uh, Claude, that the listeners will definitely check out uh, your website and get involved because veterans should not be alone. We need to hear their stories, um, especially like World War II. There's not many left, and uh, we need to, no, to be uh, there for them in their in their time of need. And um, the Korean vets, you know, they're 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 dying on us. Even Vietnam vets or or dying and, and dying young, I think. Um, how does someone get involved? How do they become a volunteer? Well, we actually need a lot of volunteers for many different purposes. And the best way to get interested in us, like you mentioned, is to follow us on social media. And certainly visit our website, which is veteranlastpatrol.org. Uh, and we have a lot of opportunities for volunteers. Um, First and perhaps uh, most essential, we look for individuals that might be willing to make uh, one-on-one visits to veterans in hospice care around the country. Uh, Secondly, we are looking for folks that might help us honor those veterans with special patriotic gifts and other types of presentations that we hope to present to these special veterans before they pass away. And then we also have a number of uh, national campaigns. We have a card writing campaign, a couple of those throughout the year, where American patriots can send us cards of gratitude, we call them, to just thank a veteran one more time for their service to their country. And those kind of cards, they go into special packets, which we and our volunteers deliver to veterans um, somewhere in the last chapter of their life. Then we also have a couple other major events every year. We have an honor ride, which is an opportunity for car clubs and motorcycle groups to help us visit facilities that are caring for these special veterans. So if you have any connections or any of your listeners have any connections to car clubs or bike groups that might want to help us honor uh, veterans on their last patrol, that's another thing we do every year. This year is the 21st of September, and I would encourage those that can help in that area to reach out to us. So we have a lot of volunteer needs, and and you can learn a lot about these different uh, needs that we have by visiting our website. Yes, and I did see your website. And, uh, again, uh, folks, you have to take a look. You you have to take a look at the wonderful um, advocacy, the, the wonderful work, that uh, Claude and uh, the volunteers are, are doing to bring, I, I want to say, Claude, to bring some companionship that will bring happiness even at the end of their life to know someone Absolutely. cares. Absolutely. We call it befriend, honor, and support. Those are the three pillars of our mission, to bring friendships, to provide honors, and to provide support. And each one of them is important, and as you say, uh, uh, essential to all that is the companionship. Sadly, there are a lot of uh, lonely citizens and lonely veterans that are in care facilities around the country. Many times they don't get many visitors. Uh, A lot of times they they may not be near family or they may not even have any family. So they sit uh, often alone uh, in these facilities, uh, and they're all over your community. So wherever you are, there would be a care facility probably near you. And inside those are oftentimes 
veterans, and it's our mission to try to make sure they aren't alone and that they do get companionship and we're able to bring these friendships, honors, and support while they're on their last patrol. How does someone um, go for training? Do they have to go for training like in a hospice, in a particular hospice group, or does your organization train them? So that's a very good question, and the process of that basically is to connect that individual, and we can help do that. We would connect that individual volunteer to a hospice care facility near where they live. So all across the country, there are hospice care providers. Uh, Most states have multiple hospice care providers. And those organizations and companies are specialized in the medical care piece of hospice. However, they all are looking for volunteers because volunteerism is something that Medicare, and Medicare, by the way, essentially covers uh, the financial requirements of hospice care. Uh, Medicare has incentivized volunteerism amongst the hospice care providers. So anywhere you live, there would be hospice care providers working in your communities. They all seek volunteers. And what we would do if you come to us is we would refer you to somebody local to you. And then regarding the training, uh, that's a process that the hospice care provider would go through with you. Uh, There are some differences from state to state, but typically there is a a background check required and some other training that's required just because of the sensitivity of caring for somebody and visiting somebody in end-of-life care and the privacy involved and things like that. So definitely there's training, uh, but it's not anything very complicated because basically what we seek volunteers to do is make friendship visits, make these companionship visits. You're not actually doing any medical care or anything like that. Uh, I tell you what, my my father and my father-in-law would have loved that. I, I have to say that they they really would. Um, my dad didn't talk much and, about you know the war, but he had mentioned a couple of things, and um, they were very proud to to serve their country. Yes, and I'm sure they I, were I, right. Yeah. So. Yes, um, I I just can't help but say how how touched I am, uh, and that takes a special kind of person, doesn't it, to go uh, be a hospice volunteer? It's, it does. It takes, I think, a special kind of empathy and compassion um, in a person to to yeah. do that to sit with someone. Yes, you're right. It's definitely not something that everybody. Uh, can do or want to do, but uh, especially in the veterans community, we kind of consider it a an obligation. I mean, we serve together uh, through thick and thin throughout our time in the service, and uh, we don't we don't want to leave each other out of the picture. And I think everybody has, uh, you know, they've seen these stories about a veteran maybe that has passed away and and didn't have family or friends, and sometimes when the communities hear about that, they'll or turn out in quite some number to a funeral to honor those veterans. But our hope is to try to find these individuals before they pass away and while they're still alive and still still with us to let them know that uh, we honor their service and we want to demonstrate that by our friendships. Uh, do you uh, reach out to, like, VFWs to yes. see if anybody Sorry. would be interested? Yes, those um, kind of organizations, the American Legion, the VFWs, are one of our primary uh, source of potential volunteers and supporters. So any veteran-centric type of organization, but not only veterans, you know, anybody who's had veterans in their family or might have a particular concern or interest in our nation's military and the service members, uh, they can help us in different ways. So from how I understand it, uh, Claude, is that somebody, say me, for example, if I wanted to be a volunteer, I would contact um, a local hospice organization where I am. I happen to be in New Jersey. And they, I would go for the training. Now, do I, would I tell them that I want to uh, volunteer for veterans, to visit veterans and about your organization? 
so what we would recommend, Betsy, is if someone wants to volunteer, if you come out to our website, uh, there's, a con- there's a contact tab there. So the prospective volunteer would complete that contact tab, and then, then we would reach out to them personally with a little bit more information, some questions, and discuss our mission in, in a little bit more detail. And then what we would do on that person's behalf or on your behalf using that example is we would help uh, make a referral for you to a local hospice in your area that we may already know or we would research and find out. So uh, the first step would really be to come through us if you'd like to work with our program. Then we'd make that connection to a local hospice. And then uh, as we were talking, uh, you would eventually get together with that local hospice and uh, learn about the the onboarding requirements and the training and uh, those uh, types of background information that you may have to provide so they can uh, uh, you know make sure you're eligible to volunteer and then then from there what typically would happen is if you're volunteering for veterans and you're on board with the hospice uh, they would start uh, telling you about cases near to where you live so hospice is really kind of three ways hospice care is conducted in our nation right now. Uh, One is inside a a care facility, which would be like a nursing home or memory care facility in your community. A lot of hospice takes care of those. Uh, But then about half of hospice these days is done in a private home. So the veteran might live in his or her private home. Maybe he's got a caregiver there. Uh, Maybe he's, you know, the person is alone, but you would visit them in their private home. And then the third uh, area is what's typically called a hospice house. So those are very specialized facilities, you small facilities, and there the hospice station is, is maybe only there for, you know, a few days because it's very, very much near the end of life. So you, bottom line is the veteran or the volunteer would have chances to visit patients that are in care facilities, at private homes, or in hospice houses just based upon what's close to you. What's, what's nearby and, and the information is provided to you by the hospice. Oh, okay. I understand. That's uh, great information to know. I have to ask this, Claude, how was it during COVID then when these poor vets yeah. uh, could not get care? I mean, I know when I live not too far from a VA uh, facility, um, they were not letting visitors in and, you know how horrible yeah. it was that many veterans died, unfortunately, um, uh, during the well, COVID. We started right, yeah, well, that's a very good question. Ben. <clears throat> we started right around the time that uh, COVID was um, um, extremely difficult, and many places did largely shut down, and it became very difficult to volunteer. So we had to come up with innovative ways to continue to support these veterans. Uh, for example, uh, some, we had a phone program where you could call and talk to veterans that were in hospice on the phone if they were able to communicate on the phone. Uh, we did uh, uh, meetings and ceremonies outside of windows uh, and sometimes by video conference. I remember a very uh, poignant ceremony where we had like eight or nine of our volunteers that worked together and um, we had a video camera, so these volunteers that were honoring the veteran that was in hospice were outside, and they had a video camera, so the video was being filmed about the honor ceremony. And, and upstairs in a second-floor room, there was a nurse with the veteran that was in hospice care, and that hospice patient was able to watch the video live, watch our ceremony live on camera. So. You know, we used out-of-the-box thinking to try to continue to do what we could to honor and uh, provide some companionship to veterans. That's also when we started our CARD program. I was talking a little bit about that earlier, mm-hmm. uh, writing program. So, yeah, COVID was extremely difficult for everyone, and it made it uh, hard to do this. So we had to come up with, uh, you know, other ways to make the impact that we could. Yes, I was I'm curious about that because I see that, you know, um, what did you start 2019? So that was yes. like right before um, yes. COVID. Um, I know I wanted a, it was in 2021. I wanted to donate my husband's clothes to the VA. 
my husband wasn't a veteran, but he was very patriotic, and they wouldn't take them. They weren't taking any donations um, at the time. So I yeah, that's, called that's unfortunate. Uh, another. It was a difficult period. Yeah. Yeah, I was kind of a little upset about that, but I called up a uh, it's a green drop, and they said they do have where I could give to veterans, and it was called the Purple Hearts. So I said, okay, yeah. I want my husband's clothes going uh, there. And um, I always have a, a love and respect for veterans, probably because my dad, you know, was uh, – yeah. A veteran and I, I think we we really do need to respect um, the veterans and um, my husband even though like I said he, he wasn't a veteran he loved history he loved reading history books and yeah. I, I think of um, the band of brothers you know and how they were together and how yeah. you form these friendships and these bonds when you're serving together because it's just you and uh, someone else in a foxhole. I mean, there's other people around, but you do form these very, I would say, very um, close bonds, maybe closer than a brother or sister. You certainly certainly do, and that's why we call it the last patrol because the word of patrol means that multiple people are involved. You know, you're part of a team. You're part of a brotherhood. And when you have to face death, you know, you you, you don't want to do that alone. No one does. But especially in the military, we know that we're parts of organizations, we're parts of units, we're parts of a team. And therefore, we want to continue this teamwork mentality even when we're facing the end of our lives. Yes, and I have to ask you this question. Claude, I see um, from the pictures that you give these beautiful, looks like quilts or or flags, yes. uh, maybe uh, both. Um, who who makes those quilts? They're, they're they look gorgeous. Well, those are all donated items to us by and large. People around the country will make uh, patriotic handcrafts of different <clears throat> types. Sometimes it can be a, something out of wood, maybe a a plaque or a flag or some uh, military symbol out of wood or metal or or another type of handcraft. And then some people are making, as you said, quilts for us. And uh, we have uh, multiple types of gifts like that that people make for us and send to us. And then we use those in what we call honor ceremonies. So you heard me mention the three parts of our mission the friend to honor and support. So this, the middle one, the honor part, is a, an attempt to make a, a public or at least a semi-public presentation to the veteran that's in hospice. It could be one individual, maybe that uh, assigned volunteer that's a friend of the veteran in hospice. It could be a small group of veterans. But the idea is to uh, make a final presentation, kind of a celebration of life with some patriotic gifts to the veteran uh, before they pass away. So those pictures you see or any of your listeners can see if they go out to our website or on our social media, uh, oftentimes we'll include uh, some pictures of some of these presentations that are made uh, to veterans on their last patrol, and and we call this presentation an honor ceremony. It is definitely uh, beautiful. Um, And that's right. There were some uh, wooden... um, you know, I don't remember what it was. Maybe, uh, was there an eagle? I know you probably have so so many, but um, crafts. Yeah, there are different that, types like, of hand crafts. It, we don't really yeah. have a, a very specific requirement. We, you know, people out there, in our, they may specialize in different things. Some people do you know, special work at metal. Some people do things with laser. Some people do things with uh, carving. It's just uh, it's something uh, that... Um, if you have a talent and you support veterans and, and you think your talent or your handcraft might be something that a veteran on their last patrol uh, would enjoy, uh, please uh, 
consider uh, working with us on that. Uh, I'll also say that, you know, we talk about the veteran hospice, and the, that's why we do what we do. But oftentimes the family of the veterans that are in hospice really get an immense satisfaction from these ceremonies and, the, and these gifts because, you know, as you mentioned earlier with your dad, a lot of times um, veterans don't talk that much. We tend to be pretty taciturn people, and we don't necessarily tell even our closest family members that much about our experience and what we may have endured. But what we find is when vets get to end of life care, uh, they tend to be willing to talk and tell their stories a little bit more because it's perhaps the, the last time that they'll have the opportunity to do that. So the families learn more and the families also learn more about um, the experience in the military service of their loved ones. I can give you one personal example. And this was actually sure. in New Jersey. I was, I was visiting a veteran in New Jersey a few years ago when I, when I lived there, and uh, the veteran had some dementia, so he couldn't communicate very well, but he did understand that I was a, uh, a former military member, and of course he knew that he was a former military member, and uh, he would also appreciate um, talking to me and, and just sharing some time together. And uh, at, one thing we noticed was that when he was talking to me, he'd oftentimes bring up construction, like such and such a building project. And he wasn't able to articulate himself very well, but you know, we knew he was talking about some construction and some building program or something, and we didn't quite understand why. But after a few visits, the daughter of this veteran shared with me uh, some of his uh, military paperwork. And after reading through that, I was able to figure out um, from some codes and some abbreviations from the paperwork that after World War II, and he had been a World War II um, uh, tail gunner uh, from the Army Air Corps in World War II, and, but after the war, he was assigned to um, uh, Fort Bliss, Texas, I believe, somewhere in Texas, if I recall, and what he did there was work on a construction project when they were expanding the military base and building new barracks for uh, the Air Force or Army Air Corps at the time. And so that was something, you know, the family didn't know that their dad had been involved in some building of military bases in Texas after the war. And so by reading that paperwork uh, and by spending some time in, with the veteran, we were able to, to learn that. And so the family learned more about their loved one's service as well. Yes, yes, getting that information. Oh, that just touched my heart. Getting the information and, you know, I am an Alzheimer's uh, advocate, and mm. sometimes, you know, people think, oh, well, they're hallucinating um, because they had dementia. No, they could be telling a, a, an event that you don't know anything about because right. they didn't tell you. And, you right. know, someone like you come along or, you know, a volunteer, hospice volunteer, and it, it does come out what they went through. Um, Interesting that when my dad, after open heart surgery, and I thought he was hallucinating, he was actually telling a story of what he saw that he had hidden for so long because it was very tragic what happened, um, yeah. that he had a deep inside. And I just, um, I think especially, and I'm a caregiver advocate, for someone to come and spend some time with a loved one who's dying means so much to the family. It gives the family a break. And it You're lets the family right. know someone cares, someone is visiting and caring. And I know, um, even though I don't know the families, I know from my own experience of going through a hospice that you know, when someone came to visit, it was so appreciated. So... I just want to encourage people, you know, if you're retired, and even if you're not retired and you want to do something with your time, um, please go on um, this web, go on the website, veteranslastpatrol.org. It's a nonprofit. And see what you can do. If, even if you can't visit, write a card. I'm actually, I have to look into that, Claude, because I, I would like to do that myself. Um, you know, you can make yeah, a craft, you. you know, maybe you can make a birdhouse. Maybe you're good with your hands and you could do 
um, you know, crocheting, making an afghan or something to help these vets um, feel appreciated at the end of their life. It's so important. Everyone wants to feel appreciated. Uh, but really, my heart goes out to anyone who's a caregiver, anyone who's a, a, a veteran. Um, and I tell people this, I've interviewed other veterans. Doesn't matter what your politics are. Doesn't matter if you agree with what's going on. Support the troops. Support those veterans that are serving our country or who, right. or who served our country. Doesn't matter whether you agreed or not. And I was um, a child to a teenager when Vietnam was going on. So I didn't really learn about what the vets went through until, you know, much later. And I uh, really felt bad for the Vietnam vets and what they uh, faced, you know, when they came home. And I think your, your nonprofit, Claude, you welcome all veterans from all, you know, branches and all wars. And we do. That's it, just. It doesn't matter um, the branch of service. Yes. yes we'll, we'll support anybody. It can be, uh, uh, you know, some people will ask us sometimes the National Guard, uh, they qualify, and the answer is absolutely. They served, and they serve in uniform. So we want to honor all veterans. And we actually say oftentimes that it's, you know, we're honoring the veterans today, and it's about what they did in the past, but we're also. Uh, setting up young Americans, we think, for the future to serve in our armed forces because if the public is sees that veterans take care of themselves until the end and through the last patrol, then it's likely to encourage future service as well because it improves the appreciation of service. It lets uh, both the family, uh, their loved one, and the volunteers see and see the confirmation of this value of service. So what we're really doing is promoting and honoring service, and by that, hoping to encourage future service. Yes, yes. That brings me to another question. This might sound like a bizarre question. Um, A volunteer doesn't have to be a veteran, do they, to visit? No, they do not. As as, uh, we, we open the doors, if someone is just patriotic and likes to talk to veterans and appreciates uh, maybe the service or the history of the armed forces, whatever your connection is, maybe family members that have been in the service, uh, maybe existing service members. You know, we we take uh, those, uh, we encourage volunteerism at large like that, and uh, there's always something that we need, we need to do, and if you want to be involved, uh, we'd encourage you to reach out to us. I have to ask you this, uh, Juan. Do you get attention from the media down where you live? You, are you in South Carolina or North Carolina? Well, I'm actually in South Carolina, but uh, we we do get some media attention. Uh, sometimes the media will turn out for uh, some of our ceremonies, and um, we've had some you know television coverage and. Uh, publication coverage in newspapers, magazines, things of that night, uh, things of that along that type. Uh, of course, we always would like more because we're about spreading the word and, and, and letting Americans know. It. We also feel like we're providing somewhat of an educational service on hospice uh, at large because a lot of Americans don't necessarily understand the hospice process very well. So we, we do seek a publicity, and it helps bring attention to our mission of trying to support uh, these veterans on their last patrol. I would love um, for your organization to be on, like, one of the major TV stations. I don't know how that happens, but I would love to see that, like, uh, uh, well, I'm thinking of my own local stations, but that I have up here in New Jersey, but, you know, something like uh, Fox News, for example, you know, I mean, just they're very patriotic and they're always doing something with uh, veterans. 
and noticing, you know, and honoring veterans. Um, I just yeah. I would love to see you on <laughs> Fox News. Well, someday we uh, hope to be on one of those programs. We hope to get the yes. uh, FBI of somebody <laughs> that's uh, uh, a producer or well-connected to those programs. I think it's uh, I think it will happen, uh, but um, it's it's so far we have had uh, good regional coverage in different parts of the country, but we haven't had any major network exposure so far. Uh, well, I hope you do get that. I, I really do. I was just thinking that. I said, you know, I would love to see <laughs> uh, your organization um, – on because on well I'm just saying Fox News for example because you no know, they do have the uh, uh, their um, camp talk wounded warrior project yes. Um, yes. and the other one um, the tunnels I can't think of the name the oh, exact the tunnels, name yeah. yes yes that's it so um, I was thinking as I was watching Fly you know too too bad they don't interview Claude Schmidt yeah. uh, for well, the veterans. Thank you, and we, uh, we hope it happens someday. We hope it happens someday. Yes. Uh, we, we feel like we're doing something patrol. quite unique. You are. Yeah. We, you are. It's, you know, the end-of-life care is a, is a difficult topic for, for many yes. people. And, you know, there, there are, are a lot of uh, military and vet, veteran-related charities, and most of them do, you know, very good work. But this category of end-of-life care and, and what we call the last patrol is something that I think is kind of neglected. People don't really think about it. And as I said earlier, you know, a lot of people uh, uh, prefer and for understandable reasons not to talk a lot about death and what happens in the last days and weeks of someone's life. But uh, we think it's it's necessary because we want to demonstrate our support for these men and women who have served our country and uh, bring them, if possible, some, you know, joy one more time uh, in their end-of-life care, period. Absolutely. Well, on this show, Chatting with Betsy, I I talk about end-of-life, you know, planning for it, uh, what you want it to look like, and we need to talk about uh, these topics. And... You know, folks, we're all going to, to die. Um, and how would you want to be treated? Don't, wouldn't you want company? Wouldn't you want someone to support you and uh, be friendly to you and um, honor you? And this is, I think, Claude, the very, the most that we could do for our veterans. And, and again, maybe this is the, the least that we could do is that the, the last patrol to honor them, and I know they probably appreciate it. I know their families do. This is a such a wonderful, wonderful uh, work that you are doing that I just can't um, say it enough that I really encourage the audience, and all the information about Colonel Claude Schmidt will be in the blog, um, and I want to thank you, a million thank yous, for not well, just serving you your country, it. You're welcome, but for what you're doing to the uh, for the veterans, and you're still serving your country by helping uh, these veterans in their last patrol. And I can't thank you enough, and your volunteers. And I'm going to go back on your website because I want to learn more about the card program. And I'm going to um, post about your website on my um, own personal page because I very strongly believe in what you're doing well, and maybe I'll make so some much, phone call. <laughs> you're welcome. You're yeah. welcome to my local, you know, VFWs and tell them about your organization. May, they yeah, may not we know. Have so many, there's so many more ways that uh, we hope to get the word out. You know, we're a fairly young nonprofit, as you mentioned, we've been active for uh, just five years and uh, it's uh, of course, very difficult to spread the word. There's a lot of uh, effort and, and cost involved in trying to promote any mission. So we're, you know, we're doing what we can, but we feel like we're doing something unique and uh, something that resonates with people. And also, it's something that uh, 
volunteers can do pretty much anywhere in their in the country. Sometimes people will call us and say, "Well, you know, I don't have a VA that's near me, a VA facility, a VA hospital." But the reality is that you know most veterans are are not cared for inside the VA. So we're not talking about uh, VA facilities when we're talking about our care facilities. We're talking about the <coughs> the nursing home that might be right up the street from mm-hmm. you and the That's hospice right. care provider that might be just down the road from where you are. So the, whether you're close to a VA facility or not doesn't matter at all. What matters is that there are Americans that have served our nation all over the country in different communities, large and small, big cities, small small towns, and uh, there's a good chance that there's a veteran, a lonely veteran somewhere near you that might really appreciate a visit and and, uh, spending some time with you. Um, Absolutely. My dad was in a, uh, his local nursing home. He had hospice. Uh, But yeah. 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 And um, he loved that, that one-on-one attention. That's for sure. Uh, He, he sure did. And I just, um, I have to ask you, how do you raise funds to well, we, sustain your nonprofit? That's a, that's a good question, and thanks for asking, Betsy. So we have, of course, a donate <laughs> tab on our website itself. People can uh, go out there and donate to us. Uh, we do several um, annual events. I mentioned earlier the honor ride and that we do with car and motorcycle groups, so that's something that we seek sponsors of, so corporate sponsors, other, other individuals that might what the Help the Mission can sponsor events like that. We do an annual dinner where we get uh, sponsors and financial contributors to help us there. And uh, coming back to the card question, I didn't specifically mention, but probably our largest card program every year, or not probably, I know it is, is something we call Operation Holiday Salute. So Operation Holiday Salute is what we do in the November, early December time frame. We're looking for Individuals and organizations uh, could be schools, could be uh, churches, could be uh, uh, clubs and other social organizations, could be individuals. They send us cards, holiday cards, Christmas cards, and then we assemble those cards. Of course, these are all personalized cards. We're, we're not looking for blank cards. We're looking for people to actually write a card for us. And so they send them to us, and we uh, collect those and put them in special packets, and then we get those, present those to hospices around the country uh, for their veteran patients. So last year we did uh, 10,000 card packets. So 10,000 veterans in hospice care were served by this program. Each one got a packet. Each packet had six to eight cards from around the country that someone had sent to us to thank these veterans and wish them the best uh, during the holiday season. So that's a big program for us. And Circling back to your question about donations, there are organizations and businesses that are sponsoring Operation Holiday Salute because as a sponsor, at a certain level, uh, you can get your name and and logo on a little card insert that goes inside these holiday card packets, and the veterans will receive those. They'll, of course, get the cards. They'll see the insert card, and uh, as well as the families. A lot of times, as you can imagine, the, the family members will read the cards to their loved ones. So it really makes a big impact, and we served 10,000 veterans last year. We hope to do even more than that uh, in this coming 2024 holiday season. Wow, that that's incredible. That is, folks, get involved. This is a call to action. This show is a call to action. Um, I'm going to see what uh, I can do. I really want to would like to get involved with the cards. Um, this is a way to serve folks. Um, I know some people naturally call to serve, and some, you know, people want to know what they could do with, with themselves. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to just say this because I'm in a lot of caregiver groups. You know what? Instead of feeling, and I'm a Jersey girl, so I'm very blunt. <laughs> Instead of feeling sorry for yourself, that you lost someone, and I know what that's like. See how you can help someone. This is a great organization, even if it's writing a card. Maybe you, like you could make an Afghan or something, 
this is a way to get involved and help other people. And I'll tell you, folks, when you help other people, you feel better. That's a great therapy at no cost. <laughs> By helping others, you feel you feel better. Yes, you feel better yourself. And I'm speaking from experience. So I yeah. just think that. Um, it's wonderful. You know, a lot of people, Claude, I'm, I'm involved. I do have a support group. After caregiving, especially for so many years, people are like, what do I do? What do I do with myself? And here's a perfect way that you can do something. Okay, maybe yeah. if you don't want to visit someone, um, you can send a card. Maybe you can call up local um, VFWs in your area. Tell them about this wonderful nonprofit. Um, you could do something. And uh, you know, I just you, think it's you, a great way. Uh, absolutely. Well, you, 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 you know, you, I think you in, in, improve your own feelings by helping others. And, <laughs> yes. Uh, there's so many volunteers that, that have told us that you know, I think I'm getting more out of this than I'm, I'm giving. And uh, that's there's a, there's personal value in service, and as you said, this is an opportunity for Americans to show their support to uh, our nation's veterans uh, during the the last chapter of their lives. So we uh, we'd be happy to have your help. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, uh, folks. You heard retired Colonel Claude. Schmid, which is spelled S-C-H-M-I-D, and the name of your nonprofit, make sure I get the correct name, VeteransLastPatrol.org. Is that correct? That's right. That's absolutely um, correct. Um, please, folks, go on the website. It will be in the blog that Jeannie White, who is the producer and uh, writes the blog, station manager, uh, spends a lot of time on. Uh, please read it. Share this show with your friends. If you know a veteran, you are a veteran. You want to get involved. You want to do something with yourself. I can't think of a better cause than to be with a veteran and honor a veteran or send a card, make a craft, do something. Um, I just think it's wonderful, and I encourage everyone to go on the website. You will be touched. Your heart will be touched. And if it's not, then I don't think you have a heart. That's just how I feel about it. Like I said, I'm a Jersey girl, and I just say it like it is. Um, Go on the website, contact um, Claude, and see what you can do to help others. And you will feel great. You'll feel better about yourself. And I just want to thank you, uh, Claude uh, Schmidt, for coming on. All that you do, all that you've done, all that you do, and all that you will do uh, to help our vets in serving our country. Um, thank you I so thank much. Thank you, Betsy. It's my privilege and uh, to do what we do, and uh, really grateful for you having us on your program. Oh, you are welcome. My uh, my honor and, uh, and my privilege uh, to do so. And I want to thank William Caldwell, who's CEO of Pastoral Talk Radio. It makes this all possible. And I want to thank you, the listeners. Um, please share this podcast with uh, your friends. I want to help as many people as possible. That's what I'm here for. It is free to subscribe to on Spotify, Spreaker, Amazon Music, Apple, to name just a few. And my heart is in this show. I do this to help other people to pay it back. It's my form of therapy, actually. Makes me feel better to know that somewhere, somehow, I'm helping other people. And that's what I'm, I'm here for. That's what the show is, is all about. It's not about me. It's about me helping you and providing resource. And here is another resource that I didn't know about, and I know about it now, and I want to share it with the world. So I thank you uh, for everything. And if you want to follow me, I am on Facebook, Betsy E. Wurzel, W-U-R-Z-E-L. And if you are looking for a support group, I have hashtag kick Alzheimer's death movement on Facebook. All people are welcome, all walks of life. And 
that's what I have to say today, folks. As I always say at the end of my show, in a world where you could be anything, please be kind. Shine your light bright because we need it now more than ever. This is Betsy Wurzel. You're a host of Chatting with Betsy on Passionate World Talk Radio Network, a subsidiary of Global Media Network, LLC. Bye-bye now.